together, um, wait a minute, Chickie, that's a conflict of interest right there. Why are you even prosecuting this case? It's in the best interest of your husband for you to press charges. Conflict of interest. Yes, it is a hashtag for this show tonight, and I'm going to be saying it a lot because it's occurring a lot. All from this one woman. Yeah. Marilyn Mosby. Mm-hmm. Oh, that's a mighty fine cigarette. Yeah, so Marilyn Mosby. Yeah. Husband, city councilman. Right. Smack dab in the middle of where Freddie Gray died. Yeah. So so right there. Right there. And, and I'm surprised no judge has done this yet. Right there. Uh, if it's in the interest of actually getting to the facts of the case, if it's in the interest of justice indeed, if it's not racially motivated, if it's not all the bullshit they try and tell us it's not, uh, nobody in their right mind would put this woman in charge of pressing these charges. They just wouldn't. It's a conflict of interest. It's going to get thrown out of court on this alone. So while this may be a stopgap measure to stop the riots, to end racism, or whatever grandiose thing she's trying to accomplish here, so far the chances aren't looking very good. No. No. Now on Friday... She said she told Gray's uh, family that, quote, no one, no one is above the law. Well, I would submit, Mrs. Mosby, there's a direct conflict of interest here. <clears throat> were you to not press charges or were you to wrongfully, which you've gone ahead and done? You're operating above the law. You should know better, especially if you've been a prosecutor for however many years, although 35 seems awful young to be put in this seat. Did somebody just get a promotion? Well, in previous interviews, Mosby has said that five generations of her family members have been police officers. Her father, mother, and grandfather were all cops. She grew up in what was known in her Boston neighborhood as, quote, the police house. Mosby said she decided to become a prosecutor at age 14. Now, get this. This is important, too. Age 14, she decided to become a prosecutor after a teenage cousin was shot to death in a robbery outside her family home. Okay, so your career choice is based on a victimization. Very interesting. Now, the cousin, 17-year-old Duran Spencer, was a college-bound honor student, apparently, who was returning from work as a lifeguard. My, my, that's, that's quite a, a heroic and, and honorable uh, situation there, isn't it? Yes. So, Wonderful, law-abiding, college-browned honor student returning home from work as a lifeguard out there saving lives. Uh, he's gunned down at 17. Yeah, shot to death. To which she decides at 14, I'm going to become a prosecutor. Logically, logically, that's not entirely what you would think. You, you might you, you might think, you know, if you were going to go that way, you know, psychologically, more likely you would become a police person. Yeah, man or woman. Yeah, police person. Especially seeing as how your your father, your mother, and your grandfather were all cops, the, the, the first thought should have been a, a policeman, you'd think, right? No, 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 no. No, it's, it's almost like she's trying to pass off that she was born to prosecute these six cops in this wrongful death, or indeed, as it's being spun in the media, murder. Yeah, murder. 
That's right. That's what it is. It's a murder investigation. <clears throat> she says, and, and this is a recent quote. Actually, it was when she announced her candidacy for state's attorney in 2014. She said, and I quote, I've seen my family blood, the same blood that runs through my veins spilled on my front door. Mosby said when she announced her candidacy for state's attorney in 2014. If that right there doesn't say vindictive vendetta, I don't know what does. And there too, ladies and gentlemen of the court, is another conflict of interest. Yes, it is. You're not supposed to prosecute cases as an executioner. And when you make statements like I've seen my family blood, the same blood that runs through my veins spilled on my front door, well, that is vindictive, and that is more the words of an executioner, not a prosecutor. <clears throat> and I'm going to take this pause for a little coffee and remind you that tonight's show is brought to you by the fine folks at Tim Hortons, New York City. I have those eight fine locations in the city to serve your coffee and bake good needs. And let me tell you, oh, praise it to the, the chapel rooftops. Mm. Oh, Tim Hortons, always fresh. Yes, it is. <clears throat> now, her electoral victory in the Democratic primary over former state's attorney Greg Bernstein was a surprise to many. After her victory, she set up a transition committee that included Baltimore attorney William H. Murphy. Yes, Billy. William H. Murphy. Remember that name. Because William H. Murphy, if you don't already know the name, is the actual attorney who is representing Gray's family. Yeah. Representing Gray's family. Yes, he is. William H. Murphy. Murphy was among Mo Mosby's largest campaign contributors last year. Conflict of interest. He donated $5,000 to her campaign. The Fraternal Order of Police also donated to her campaign, the Baltimore Sun reported. Well, Mosby's spokeswoman, Rochelle Ritchie, said in a statement on Friday that hundreds of people donated to her campaign. There is no conflict of interest surrounding Billy Murphy. He is representing the family in a civil case which has nothing to do with the criminal case. Excuse me. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen of the court, who stands to gain in a civil case should these charges have an outcome of a guilty verdict? Well, it would benefit Billy and the family. Conflict of interest. <laughs> Was that like the third or fourth one now, just in the first 10 minutes of the show? Yeah, well, there's more. Yeah, not even kidding. The local... Uh, <clears throat> the local FOP lodge asked Mosby to appoint a special prosecutor because of her personal connection to Murphy and, of course, her marriage to Nick Mosby, the city councilman. Both, okay, uh, the policeman's group here, uh, are recognizing, as am I, that these are both two more conflicts of interest. Yes, please, please, you, you should appoint a special prosecutor because of the conflict of interest to Murphy and the conflict of interest that is your marriage to the city councilman. Yes. In a letter, Gene Ryan, president of the FOP Lodge 3, said he had very deep concerns about what many conflicts of interest in her office pursuing the case. Most importantly, it is clear that your husband's political future will be directly impacted, for better or worse, by the outcome of your investigation. Yeah. Let's take a moment to pause, shall we? They said the word investigation. Of course, Freddie Gray is dead. Of course, she's pressing charges against six people, so she is inferring intent, thus making it a murder investigation. <clears throat> Somebody call in and tell me when in history... When in history of any kind of police and, and criminal investigations and, and any kind, 
when in history ever has there been a murder investigation that has lasted 11 days before pressing charges? Where? One. Give me one instance of this ever happening. It has never happened. But because this is a racial situation, because we need to calm the masses now, because we've already had to call in 3,500 National Guard troops and uh, APCs and Hummers and, and M1 Abrams. Because we've had to call in state police and local police from other jurisdictions. And we've had to call in police from outer, out of state to come and try and quash this racial uprising. Really? Well, let's talk about race for a minute before I go to my first commercial break. Think about this while we're actually on our commercial break. Do me that favor. Think about what if after an 11 day investigation, we charged a black person with these crimes. Yeah. Is, is that racist? Is it racial? I can guarantee you all of the black leaders all across the country would be screaming at the top of their lungs. It's racially motivated. 11 days. Nobody's ever had an 11-day murder investigation. This is outrageous. Well, yes, it is. It's kind of my point. Anyhow, we'll be back in two minutes. We'll get uh, into more of this Mosby show. Back in two. And you are listening to Crash Talk with Christopher John Taylor, a.k.a. Crash Jesus, on HTLA Radio 1, New York. What if there was a coffee that was sourced from some of the world's most renowned growing regions? Abundant with rich, fertile soil. What if this coffee was picked at the perfect moment, then packed meticulously and shipped carefully to be roasted under the watchful eye of coffee masters? What if it was expertly blended, ground, and sealed, ensuring maximum flavor and freshness, then brewed in small batches and always served fresh within 20 minutes just the way you like it? Now, what if this coffee just happened to be the coffee you already know and love? Tim Hortons. Always fresh. Always great tasting coffee. Man, I've been to a lot of places over these past 50 years. Seen the whole true north strong and free. Cause I've been everywhere, man. I've been everywhere. I've been to Cooksville, Stowville, Bainesville, Bowmanville, Bonneville, Unionville, Oakville, Dunville, Brockville, Boucherville, Melville, Drummondville, Kentville, Grenville, Morinville, Maryville, Parksville, Stephenville, Sackville, Spring Hill, Westville, Walkerville, hanging on a windowsill. Hey! He said, wow, that's a lot of places. I said, hang on, there's more. I've been to Moncton, Picton, Shannon, Vernon, Stellarton, Hamilton, Nipigon, Nobleton, Yorkton, Brighton, Bolton, Beaverton, Brandon, Edmonton, Walkerton, Wyerton, Granby. Charlottetown, Burnaby, Yellow Knight, White Horse, Corner Brook, none of it. I've been everywhere, man. I've been everywhere, man. I crossed the prairies bare, man. I breathed the mountain air. I've traveled, I've done my share, man. I've been everywhere, man. Check it out. Ottawa, Wawa, Mattawa, Chippewa, Moose Jaw, Oshawa. I've been so inspired by being in New York because everything from what people are wearing on the street to the way they're interacting with each other to drive through the West Village at, at night and you see a couple kissing on the street or you see someone fighting outside their apartment or you see so much humanity on a daily basis that even if you're not inspired by your own life that day, you can be inspired by someone else's life. You got that lost. 